Yes, guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. We have got all of the clothes out on the bed behind us. We're packing our bags. Tomorrow morning, we fly to the US for Chelsea's preseason tour. So, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, I'm going to be doing a daily vlog out in the US, which is going to be a bit like the vlog I posted a couple of days ago. I want to try and make sure that all of you that are really only here for the news still get the news and it's not kind of just flooded with loads of random other things on top of it. But at the same time, I want the series of vlogs in the US to be exactly what would happen if you wanted to go to every Chelsea match across America. What could your trip look like? Because I think we're going to be in America again next year for the Club World Cup. And because we've got American owners, chances are... Pre-season will quite often be in the US from now. So I want this series to be fun, exciting. We've got match vlogs, six things we learnt, match previews. All of the stuff will be involved in a video that will be posted at 10.30 p.m. at the end of every day US time. So some of the videos will be going up in the middle of the night in the UK, so you can watch it when you wake up. Some of them will be different time zones across different various states in the US, so stay tuned to GBFC, there'll be a new episode up every single day, and six things we learned will be separate as it always is. In today's video, though, we're going to talk about the goalkeeper news. Yesterday, I think basically every single Chelsea keeper was spoken about in some kind of detail by various different journalists, be it Robert Sanchez, Petrovic, and even Lunin. The goalkeeper of Real Madrid is apparently linked with Chelsea. There might be something in this where Chelsea are trying to work out a deal where Kepa goes the other way. Lunin wants to be a number one goalkeeper somewhere. The question I have here is, is Lunin, the Real Madrid keeper who's secondary to Thibaut Courtois, obviously, is Lunin any better than Sanchez or Petrovic? And before we talk about whether or not Lunin is the right option, I don't really think he is. I'm going to stick a graphic up on the screen here that kind of shocked me a little bit when it comes to comparing Petrovic and Sanchez. To the naked eye, in my opinion, my opinion isn't going to change just by looking at this star graphic here that we've got different goals conceded, save percentages, saves. You can see the graphic. And pretty much it shows that Robert Sanchez is a better goalkeeper based on these statistics that you see on the screen. Personally, for me, I have never been a big fan of Sanchez. And you also have to take into consideration here, Petrovic came in when our season was in utter chaos. We were having one of the worst seasons. And Petrovic came in and he just seemed to have that something about him, made some massive saves and won us a lot of points in the second half of last season. But when you're looking at the Chelsea news right now, the positives behind this is that Enzo Maresca is staying clear with his philosophy and it is the distribution and what he wants his goalkeeper to be able to do with the ball at his feet that is enabling him to make the call right now that Chelsea need a new goalkeeper. And the fact that he's doing this before we've even kicked a ball in a preseason friendly is fantastic. So this is the update here from Fabrizio Romano so we can get some more context behind this. Chelsea are considering to bring in new goalkeeper to compete with Robert Sanchez, who's starting the season as the first choice keeper. Despite early links with Marmadashvili, Chelsea are keen on a goalkeeper whose strength lies in his distribution. Now, this also comes from the Telegraph. While Petrovic is highly rated, there is a concern that there is too great a difference between him and Robert Sanchez. It remains to be seen whether he leaves on loan or is made available for sale. First reaction to this is that I genuinely believe that Petrovic is a better goalkeeper than Robert Sanchez, and that is after I've shown you that graphic. Please let me know in the comments down below. Are you a Petrovic man, or are you a Sanchez man? To be quite honest, when it comes to what Chelsea really need to be able to compete at the highest level in the Premier League, right now, I don't think either goalkeeper is good enough to be Chelsea's number one. I think Robert Sanchez, if Maresca's going to back him, look, I will give him the benefit of the doubt. But if we keep seeing high profile errors and he's not saving as much as he should be, then we're going to be like, we should have bought in a new goalkeeper. 
When you look at the success of Man City, the success of Liverpool, Edison, Allison, two absolutely class goalkeepers. And I've been seeing stories that Edison might be moving to Saudi Arabia for 30 million. Now, if we're not in the conversation here to bring in Edison, who has won countless Premier League trophies, then what the bloody hell are we doing? And I think, to be quite honest, Petrovic, I like him. I think for what he did to come from the MLS and to step into a Chelsea team that was in complete chaos when he, ste- when he stepped into that number one shirt, basically, last season, I think he did a decent job. I must say also, with the, with the ball at his feet, he did look shaky at times, but he was definitely improving. And I do find it mad that we have gone from Petrovic having such a good second half to the season to basically universal agreement within the club that Sanchez is the number one. He's a better keeper than Petrovic. Now, all of a sudden, we're talking about goalkeepers here like Lunin, who, to be quite honest, I don't think is much better than either Petrovic or Sanchez. I'd probably say of the three, right now he's probably the better goalkeeper. But we're not talking here about a straight upgrade. And I think what Chelsea might be getting wrong here when it comes to this goalkeeper situation is that I think we're missing the boat in terms of building a spine of the team. Petr Cech was the best goalkeeper in the world. And then in front of him was John Terry, the best centre-back in the world. In front of him was Frank Lampard, the best midfielder, in my opinion. And then Didier Drogba. That is the foundations of what made Chelsea who they are today. I know that the club is now run by someone different. I know that football has changed dramatically and you can't just go out in one summer and spend what would probably cost you 100 million, 100 million, 100 million, 100 million. But we have spent that much money in the past. And I think if we're going to keep on spending, we've already spent 95 million quid, I think, this summer or 85 million. And Kin and Dewsbury Hall is, for me, the only player that comes in and gives us like a first 11 potential option. And the goalkeeper is where you should start with. We shouldn't be looking to bring in a same level goalkeeper as a Sanchez. 25 million to get another guy to just compete is ridiculous. Spend 40, 50 and get an actual class goalkeeper in to make a massive difference. And I mean, you look at what Onan has done at Manchester United. He's been an absolute joke for times, but at least he plays the way that the manager wants him to play. And at Chelsea right now, we've got Petrovic. And let me bring the graphic up for you guys once again. Like, what really are our our goalkeepers? Maresca wants someone who can distribute the ball well. Okay, cool. But then if we're going to do that, don't just get another player in the average goalkeeper category. Actually go out there and make some noise. Bring in a top-class keeper and we don't have this who's our number one. Who should be starting? Well, we don't really like any of them, but we got three of them. Like, it's a joke. And when it comes to what's going to happen here to Petrovic, Robert Sanchez remains the first choice of Maresca. We know that. And as much as it's questionable, I can kind of see it. At this point, Kepa Ariza Balaga is still at Chelsea. And this is the update on him. Al Itihad have now ended their interest in Chelsea goalkeeper Kepa. We can't get rid of this guy to Saudi Arabia, for goodness sake. Itihad had made significant progress and believed Kepa was becoming open to Saudi but the club's board voted against the transfer. Now, at the moment, Kepa is actually looking and waiting for Real Madrid, which is why these rumours of Loon into Chelsea came from Spanish media yesterday. I waited to see if there was anything concrete behind this because it just did come out of nowhere. And uh, it seems to me at the moment that Chelsea haven't even made an approach for Loon in. And this kind of comes from Kepa just hoping that it's Real Madrid. Look, mate, they got Courtois. Lunin was ahead of you last season. Like, You just want more trophies, don't you? You just want the medals. You want the vibes. I get it. Fair enough. I'd probably say yes to that as well at this point. But anyway, Genoa are now interested in Petrovic, a man that was Chelsea's number one last season. We might be loaning him to Genoa. It's a mess, in my opinion. And that is what we have got for the goalkeeper stories. Let me know in the comments down below. But we're not finished here today for the Chelsea news. Smack a like if you're enjoying yourself. Subscribe if you are new. But the next piece of news is brilliant news. It is something to savour. And it is something that we have been waiting for for significantly too long. Romelu Lukaku is willing to take a 50% pay cut to join Napoli this 
summer. With Romelu Lukaku, the fact that he has been still at Chelsea, earning the wages that he was on, we spent all of that money on him. It's just had and left such a sour taste in my mouth, particularly when we look at the strikers that Chelsea have wanted. And we've got this piece of news here. It comes through the Court Offside podcast tweeted by Chelsea HQ that Chelsea are looking to use the funds from the sale of Armando Broya and Romelu Lukaku to fund a move for Victor Osimhen. I said it to you guys when Mark Yu signed for Chelsea a couple of weeks ago. I don't think Mark Yu, as much as it's an exciting £5 million gamble, I don't think he's been bought in to directly be competitive with Jackson and Kunku for the striker shirt this season. If Nicholas Jackson gets injured and Christopher Nkunku is injured again, which, to be quite honest, with the records that we have with injuries, none of this would surprise me. Chelsea still need a high-profile striker, in my opinion. If something happens to those two, we're doomed. And it sounds a bit crazy to say, like, well, if you've got two good strikers, like, why do you need a third top one? You just do. With the injury record that we have at this club. And Victor Osimhen is a guy that I don't know how many times I've said his name on this channel. But the majority of the time that Chelsea have been linked with Osimhen, I've been fully on board with it. And then when that price came out of 130 million euros, you look at the way that Chelsea aren't willing to spend crazy wages anymore. We lost Michael Olise to Bayern Munich, who there's no doubt about it, would have been a player to level us up for this season. We've turned our noses up potentially at directly competing with Barcelona for Nico Williams unless all of those agent fees go down. So I think with this Osimhen deal, Chelsea are going to be relying on the sale of Lukaku to Napoli to go through. And then it's going to be up to Antonio Conte here. And I know that the Napoli president is an absolute bugger to work with. We've dealt with this before. But I think there is a deal and a pact for Osimhen to leave Napoli this summer the rumours are that he was getting very close and he was becoming open to joining Paris Saint-Germain. So the quicker this Lukaku sale goes through, I think Chelsea will then will be holding on to that little bit of window of opportunity that we might still have to sign Victor Osimhen. We're going to push the sale potentially or try and offer Armando Broya out to other clubs to bring this revenue in and maybe one last throw of the dice to bring Osimhen to Chelsea. If it's me and you've looked at all of the different stories, all of the comments from Osimhen over the years, he wanted that move to be a Premier League move. There's been rumours that it could be Arsenal, but they've not really moved in this direction at all. And I do think Osimhen at Chelsea, as much as the injury record also worries me, I think he is that calibre of player. I think if he was to join Chelsea, we've all seen the pictures of him as a youngster in a Chelsea shirt. I just think it would work. Awesome enter Chelsea though. Let me know your thoughts still. Could this still happen in the comments below? If we're going to go and kind of, I'm going to say skimp out on the price of a new goalkeeper, then maybe we are leaving funds open. We're leaving options open. We've already made a load of money from sales, remember, during this transfer window. So I still think there are big moves to happen potentially for Chelsea in this transfer window. Heavily dominant goalkeeper focus today. Awesome end story at the end. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And make sure you subscribe because we're going to start the vlogs for the Chelsea Tour from tomorrow morning at 5am when we head to the airport. I'll see you guys there. Come on, you blues.